This is the Emergency Medical Minute, sponsored by Mile High Ambulance. Hey guys, Dr. Lynch here, one of the air docs in Swedish. Talking about pediatric hypoglycemia today in our medical minute. So start off with a kind of etiology here. So really the age dictates the possible causes of hypoglycemia. So if you're dealing with a neonate, usually it's some sort of hormonal deficiency, such as congenital adrenal hyperplasia, some sort of cortisol deficiency, hypopituitarism, or an inborn error metabolism. Or it could be a systemic infection. So if they're under 30 days old, really need a full infectious workup, should be initiated for any hypoglycemia of unknown origin. A little bit older in the toddler age, here's where we start to think about accidental ingestion. So think about sulfonylurea, such as glipizide or glyburide. And then our older children, here's where we start to think about Addison's disease. So this is hypocortisolism, some sort of intentional or accidental overdose and then some exogenous insulin use if they are a known diabetic or or someone in the house is a known diabetic. So diagnosis, if you have a child or an infant, usually glucose less than 60 is hypoglycemic. If you have a newborn, usually about less than 45 in a symptomatic patient and then less than 35 in an asymptomatic neonate, kind of depending on what source you look at. So treatment, obviously if they're awake, you can just use oral glucose, you can juice, popsicles, frosting, etc. If they're drowsy or altered or not really protect their airway, obviously IV is the modality of choice. Kind of a good easy way to remember this, and there's a called the rule of 50s, meaning that the dose you give times the concentration must equal 50. So starting with neonates, so this is neonate to two months old, they get five mg per kg of D10W. So that's five milligrams times 10 equals 50. And then the next age group is our two months to eight year old. These guys get two mg per kg of D25. So again, two times 25 equals 50. And then anyone over eight, she gets one mg per kg of D50. So again, one times 50 equals 50. So all those, the dose times the concentration equals 50. If you're out in the field and trying to estimate a child's weight, you can always remember the formula two times the patient's age plus eight gives you a pretty pretty rough estimate of, of their weight. So remember, if you, if you start giving any of these dextrose, you got to recheck the sugar in about 15 minutes. If they're, again, hypoglycemic, you can give another bolus and then probably should initiate some, some maintenance fluids with, with D10NS at 1.5, your maintenance rate. So if you don't have IV access readily available, you can try glucagon. That's 0.03 mix per kg IM. However, this is rarely useful in infants and young kids. You're kind of better off trying like a little bit of glucose gel buckley while trying to obtain IV access. And one thing of note, if standard therapy fails, you can give hydrocortisone, 25 milligrams IV for neonates and infants, and then 50 milligrams for toddlers and smaller school-aged children, and then 100 milligrams for, for everyone older than that. And that causes a, a demargination of the glucose off the walls of the vessels and can actually increase your, your glucose level. This should be given early in patients with hypopituitarism and adrenal insufficiency. One more thing that's kind of not, not particularly relevant to the EMS world, but it's kind of an interesting thing. So there's some cases where patients are exogenously taking insulin that they don't need, otherwise known as kind of factitious hypoglycemia, or taking in kind of a self-harm attempt. In these patients in the ER, we can check a C-peptide, which would be low in patients taking exogenous insulin, as synthetic insulin lacks C-peptide when compared to, to naive insulin. So that's all, guys. Just remember the rule of 50s. And have a great day. Bye. We'd like to thank our sponsor, Health One Continental Division and Swedish Medical Center for their financial contributions to the EMM. Donations from them and listeners like you make it possible for us to fulfill our mission of producing and spreading free medical education to the masses. If you enjoy our show, please consider making a one-time or reoccurring donation to help cover our operational costs and keep the EMM awesome. Click on the link in our show notes to make a donation. Thank you for listening.